Hello and welcome to yet another video in our Shucks preview series. This time we're having a look at cooperative games, all kinds of games where you're having fun with your pals and you're on their side. Now, an important thing to remember with these videos is that they are previews, not reviews. No opinions at all in these, just taking a look at some hot, upcoming, exciting new releases. Without further ado, let's look at some co-op games. Roll camera. Oh, I think the cameras are rolling, actually. <laughs> that was just a little joke. Yeah. It's called roll the camera. I was really worried that it wasn't called roll camera for a minute there. Yeah. But it is. It is. Um, it's called roll camera. Yeah, and I, I didn't know the cameras were rolling when we started. So, oh, so, so many things could have oh, gone wrong. So many things going on. Woo! This is a game about rolling cameras. It's about making a film together. It's a cooperative game, Ooh. which is nice. You're trying to make a film that's either a cinematic masterpiece or just pretty good. No, sorry. or so bad it's good. We're trying to make no, it. No, that's film. true. We are together. And I only just realized that the, the, the title's kind of a pun because in this game you're going to be rolling dice oh, a lot. That's why it's damn. called camera. Isn't that sweet? Mm. Quinn's did a preview of this last or shucks. So you can go and watch that if you want more mm -hmm. of a teach. We're going to give a rough teach because we're going to talk about the expansion. But Got it. for those Got who it. don't know what roll camera is, I'll give a brief overview of the game and then we'll talk about its expansion because I think that's what the preview is mostly for. Yep. Let's do that, that afterwards. That sounds good. Yeah. Let's talk about what the actual game is first. In Roll Camera, you're trying to shoot a movie. Either a movie that's great or so bad that it's good. You take the role of someone in the production. I've picked roles that kind of roughly correlate to our role within the channel. I think that kind of uh, works. Well, I'm the cinematographer and you're the editor. Yeah. Yeah, no fair. Editor, yeah, yeah. Of, oh, look, that's me snipping up all the yeah. films. Jump, 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 and that's jump, you jump, jump, jump. caring about lighting. Yeah. Nerd. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. So what you're going to be doing is if you are the possessor of the little wheelie little thing over there, the you're in thing. charge of the current turn. And you're going to do that little process that is listed on it. Also, just a really cute detail. If you want to flip that over, you'll see that it shows you where to position the dials for I different see. difficulty settings. Oh, that was really cute. The first thing you're going to do is introduce a problem. Just like the real life Matthew. Okay, is. so I'm gonna draw draw a problem. You're gonna draw a problem. Hey Tom, I've just got a new problem for you. What is it? The problem is the cinematographer insists on shooting on a hundred and twenty millimeter film. Is that lots? Uh I I don't know. Some cinematographer I think it's you are wide. One twenty millimeter thick film. So we're gonna shoot on thick film. It's really thick. <laughs> It's like you can't see through it. Yeah, I mean, it's that, like jelly. That could be true. I think it's to do with the, the, the width the depth, rather yeah. than the, the depth. <laughs> so then once you've taken a problem, we can resolve that later. It doesn't matter. The problems do get harder to resolve the more of them there are. We yeah. don't need to worry about that for now because the first thing you're going to do is you're going to roll the crew dice. Wow, these dice. <laughs> what? I did think they looked odd. I set them as a little trap for you. That is... I oh, mean, fun. they're metal dice, and it is one of the little optional things you can get. You can instead get metal dice. We're wow. using all premium this we're time. We're using baby. the premium. The, I mean, honestly, like I didn't know they were metal, and the act of picking them up, yeah, was like it's like when you put your hand in a bag or something, you don't know what it is. Yeah. it's jelly or something. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was kind of faintly unpleasant because I was like, what's happening? I, I was really hoping you'd just go whoa straight away. I must say, the way they fun. roll is. Uh... Kind of great. It's got a good noise to it, hasn't it? So these are the dice that you're going to be able to use this round, and you can assign them to all these different spaces over here. We won't go into detail, but there's various things you can do. You can resolve problems with dice. You can build your little set out, which is kind of the main action of the game, is you want to build up this set so you can shoot these scenes over here, yeah. which then require specific organizations of dice in specific ways. You can get ideas, which are these things over here, and then you can have meetings to choose which ideas you're going to put into action that will change the way the game is played. Um, and you can also do things like get interns, or that you change the dice, but they create more problems. Ha <laughs> ha, intern joke. Um, all of this you're going to be trying to do to make the perfect film, which we have a script over here. We're making Lethal Murder. <laughs> Lethal Murder, is Lethal that the name Murder. of the film? That's the name of the movie that we're making. Oh, that's great. I'd switch out the top ones, because there's also... Like, okay. Uh-oh, Incoming Murder, <laughs> which is the next one. Of course, Mind Blowing Murder, or Mind Blowing Seaside <laughs> Smooches. Or... That's not a film. Hooray, Hooray for seaside smooches! These aren't films that you're allowed to watch. You no. need to go to bed. <laughs> They're top shelf it's material. It's past your bedtime right now. So, so Tom needs to go to bed. What time is it? It's like 8 p.m. Oh my goodness. So you haven't had your Hornets. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to want specific organizations of clips, which are these things you're going to shoot. And then when you're ready, you flip them over and put them into the editing room like this. Mm -hmm. And then that will create your full movie that will give you like... You it get... has to have the right elements for mm -hmm. the film. Exactly. And you'll get sort of appeal along the way. But it's important that you don't run out of time or budget, which are the two little things on the wheel. If you do that, 
curtains, you've failed. Uh, that's kind of the cut and thrust of most of the game. You've also got this little miniature expando module that I'll show in just a moment, which is you can work for a different production company. So we've got the whole stack here and they'll have different requirements uh, uh, for what kind of movie that you're making so at any given Pilfer time. Pictures, Maze Group, Bungle Bros, <laughs> <laughs> Sapaku Films, Blindfold Media, Pot of Gold, Quick Buck Entertainment. Yep. There's a whole bunch. I mean, I'm just enjoying myself at yeah, this point. It's a good time. Now, let me tell you all about the what we're real here for, which is the B-Movie expansion. So we'll see that we've got Lethal Murder, which is the movie we're making, but what B-Movie, you're making a B-Movie in the B-Movie expansion, so you're going to add a little middle bit to the <laughs> script. So we're making Lethal Enchanted Murder. Okay. But we also might be making Lethal Steampunk Murder yeah. or something else. Lethal Cold Calculating Murder. <laughs> That's like we said that up, No. No. Lethal um, cold calculating seaside switches. <laughs> I do like, I I'm, like that. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, I'm glad. So these are the little, these are the, also a deluxe component. These are the wooden genre tokens. And what you're generally going to be doing in this expansion is you're going to be shooting scenes that have specific genre elements to them. You'll see over here that this one, which I'll put it on your little B-roll cam, has like a little any genre token next to it. But you might have one that will provide you with a horror by a horror bill bat or a little steampunk robot. You're gonna to wanna to shoot certain scenes that will provide you with certain genre stuff because you wanna satisfy this by the end of the game. You've also got equipment as a module, so you can do little extra- You get your rubber mask for things. your lethal cold calculating <laughs> seaside smooches. Which will be great. Uh, Putting the cold put... into the, <laughs> the coldness. You've got more of everything, so more problems, more ideas, more production companies, you've got new roles. So over here we have things like Production assistant, you got VFX supervisor, you got the composer, etc., etc. A whole bunch of new roles. I should have mentioned that the roles that we have actually do give us little special abilities. You've got I believe new it. Production companies to work for, and my favourite cute little detail, which I'll just show off now with this little thing, because it is adorable. If we can get a little close up on this bad boy. One second. The game encourages you to place the little genre tokens that you get into the little scene cards, so you can put a little oh. tiny hat on someone to make it into a western. It's kind of adorable. And that's really There's sweet. a lot here, which is quite deep. There's also, I really like this, it's just a flippant thing. You've got this, um, these are just props oh. that you can just add into scenes. They're just punch board little props. So just, you can just, just be a like, sheet of props. Yeah, just for fun. In. They don't actually do anything in the game, but they're just cute little details. Including if, if you're waiting for your turn. eyes. So yeah. You can change your eyes. I find that's a great way of, if I want to express a different emotion, I just change my eyes. Just I, pop them I out. Put some different eyes on. We'll do some VFX now to make your eyes pop out and change into the different oh, eyes. I don't have a budget for that. Do we we've run out of time. <laughs> it's time to forge your destiny. Fate Forge. Fate Forge. Chronicles of Khan. Khan, you believe it. This is a game from Mighty Boards and it is a kind of narrative dungeon crawler. Mm. It's got a couple of interesting features that I think are quite neat. We're going to go through some of that stuff in a moment. First of all, it has an app. A lot of the game's story is actually being run by this little uh, clever wobbly mobile phone that I got. Um, using my own money. It's my own wobbly phone. Please don't wobble it too much. It's sorry, sorry. It's very disrespectful. So, you know, start a new campaign, your phone wobbles, uh, <laughs> and then you choose what kind of characters you want to play as, and it's going to take you through some stuff. And initially what we do is we would read this letter, Ooh. which is from Naske. I'm not going to read all of it out because that would take for ages. That would be a long time. But effectively, that gives you some idea about the beginning of the story mm -hmm. and you choose your characters you're gonna play as. I'm the forest guard. I am the mercenary, which is kind of like this lady who looks like a vampire and also has a massive shield. Sick. Oh, yeah, right. And we're gonna be playing through some little adventures, leveling up some skills, collecting equipment and story is gonna be happening Ooh. along the way. And it's driven by the app, right? It's you do a bit of story, then you do a bit of dungeon, then you do a little bit more story, right? Exactly, Monde. So, I'm going to choose the characters that we are. I'm Forest Guard and the Mercenary. Forest Gump, Mercer Boy. Start the little campaign, and yeah, it tells us to like, read the story thing. Act one of three. And then you can see here, it's like, these days, all road in Khan lead to the city of Easterfear, the capital of the capital. And it's quite hard to read at this angle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm struggling. not going to read it, but basically, yeah, you've got like a few pages of some ah. like text, with some nice pictures, illustrations. Yeah, lovely. And every now and then you're going to get a little choice. Such as like, you know, do you want to stand up for yourself or put your head down and keep walking? What do you reckon, Tom? I'm going to stand up for myself. It's about time. Oh. Oh, well, we can see now on the top of this. <laughs> seamless. Uh, we've we've <laughs> lost some reputation with the Empire and... Oh. 
Yeah, that's fine. We stood up, just because we stood up for ourselves, just yeah. we believed in ourselves. They are not keen on that. They are would prefer you don't do that. That would probably make more sense if I knew what was going on in the story. Why didn't you read Neske's letter? I should have done. I'm really sorry. Apologies to Neske and everyone in the NASCAR sponsorship <laughs> booth. So we continue through. There's a whole bunch of story. You get some choices. Do some choices. Keep pressing the buttons doing choices. Obviously, when you play the game, you probably would read this. You'll make choices together. Exactly. Unit. Then we can see that it tells us what to set up and get the bits out of the bag and get the cards out of the bag. And I've already flipping done it. Make a little map using the modular things. Already done it. And then we get into the actual how the game works. The box does come with a tiny miniature map to set up these for you, doesn't it? <laughs> it does to do the little puzzle. What? It doesn't. I thought that was an add-on, an extra. I mean, I, I feel like that's a Kickstarter that's going to have to get some big numbers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it has a box full of all these like Tetromino style mm -hmm. scenery bits. So there's a lot of like modularity here in terms of being able yeah. to put together loads of different maps and loads of different scenarios. Get a little bit Tetrisy. In terms of how stuff works, it's really simple, right? These individual sections mm -hmm. count as different rooms, effectively. Yeah. So the shape of them is sort of relevant. It's just a bit of lovely flavor. Bit of fun flavor. Bit of fun flavor. And effectively, the connectedness of them matters. Yeah. In terms of like how far you move. So moving two spaces would literally be like, you know, one, boom, boom. Two, yeah. three to go there. When you're in these places, mm -hmm. you've got enemies, you've got to fight them. As you might expect, just running through spaces past enemies. Sometimes they don't like that unless you've got the ability to do so but you're going to be rolling dice. And you'll see that each of the characters have basically like a setup of what dice they're good at initially. Yeah. And you can only ever roll up to four, but basically it means that this is your selection of what you can roll at. And mm -hmm. you know, reds are going to be better at swords generally, whereas the green dice, for example, is particularly good at the kind of magic luck, I believe. Ah. Um, or maybe it's the blue dice that's very good at magic luck. No, that's good at magical ranged attack. At arrows. Oh, I'm always getting my magic magical mixed luck up. And magical, yeah, the two kinds. The way the game works effectively is your characters have got different abilities, standard mm -hmm. things they can do, and then you can spend standard things such as like a sword is a move, is a attack, <laughs> a foot is a move, yep, or a kick, yeah, and that you know the ranged attack is ranged attack, etc. Yep. And I believe that's just Billy Billy Bumpkin nothing, which is not ideal. <laughs> and you got crits and stuff. It's a game. You've played games. I've played games before. The trick thing though that I quite like mm -hmm. is that everyone rolls their dice behind their own little thing, yep. and then you're not allowed to specifically say what you've got. Uh, right. So you can right. sort of you know hash it out and be like, well, I can kind of do this. Mm -hmm, I can mm -hmm. kind of do this. And the fun thing is that you're actually able to like you know change things for other people. Like for example, one of the characters I played as, their ability was to almost like change one dice per round and you could do it for other characters right okay so it could be like do you that who needs a kind of free re-roll or whatever mm -hmm. like hey i've got one and they do a little secret re-roll behind their screen exactly Love exactly it. and then you reveal them and then you act out what you're gonna do cool now the thing i like about this is you can see on the sheet we've got like uh you start off with a little hearts and your energy and then as you go through you're going to be spending stuff and you're going to be losing hearts and moving down and basically your resources are going to be getting in the getting a bit knackered mm -hmm. getting a bit knackered and then after each round ends, you're going to have enemies effectively taking an action, yeah. doing things, and using the app. Again, it's going to be telling you like they're going to move forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, these guys are going to attack stuff. So, and also the, the order of them is going to be slightly randomized a little bit. There's always right. a bit of a, there's a slight XCOM thing in the fact that at the start of the round, you always know like what's going to happen, but then there's usually a little bit of spice. There's mm. like something you don't okay, know okay. that's going to pop up just to keep you on your toes. Some unpredictability. Exactly. Um, but it's all fairly rapid. And the thing I like about this actually from the, the rules of the game, because I've not really played it extensively, I had a quick demo <laughs> of it, is the way that effectively the games are designed to be very simple, yeah. very fast, and it's just a case of like you have to try and you have like a certain amount of time to get out of the dungeon. Oh, basically. right, okay. So it's like you just have to get there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to kill the big bad boss, the big purple boss. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, then at the, when the time has run out, mm -hmm. your characters automatically move to the exit. And if they have <laughs> to move through rooms with enemies, then they get taken damage. Once. Okay, that's it. So, so it basically allows you to be like, they keep, you keep going. Yeah. Right? And if you yeah. fail the mission, it's like you just, I think you've just marked, I believe you just mark the mission as a failure and carry on. And the story yes. carries on in vain of that. So it's, it has some momentum to it mm. where things can't drag on for a very long time. It's cool. just like, this is the mission. How did you do? Didn't get past the lobby. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Onwards. Next, then, like, next time. Yeah. And you have like little skill checks and stuff in between missions, right? Little bits yep. of story where you can test your characters. Yeah. So you've got like, you know, different types of dice for like, yeah, the traditional combat dice. You've also got the skill check dice. And 
yeah, you've got a little box for your. I mean, obviously, this is, I should mention, if, if it hasn't obvious, this is prototype stuff. Prototype. But you've got a little box for kind of the party backpack. Oh, where cute. you can, like, you know, share, like, money. Basically, money, yeah. tokens, and things like that. And, yeah, some simple stuff like that in terms of reminding things. There's also, like, we've got the cards for the characters. These are the cards for the enemies, you can see, that give us information about, like, what they do, roughly, like, what their stats are in terms of, like, you know, what sort of stuff they're going to roughly do but again there will be a little bit of spice from the app as well you can see we've got all these different skills that you can potentially unlock the characters head, head chopper, chopper double strike which effectively are skills that you can use to turn uh results into other things mostly so it's, most of these things are a case of like turn these two into that etc right little kind of little little i was going to call them equations but that's kind of wrong uh, little, uh, little, little machines little, little i guess little internal machines that yeah. can make you do right. something a bit yeah, different. You're probably going to roll a load of swords, but what if you wanted to roll a bunch more? That's where Head Chopper comes in. Exactly, exactly. exactly. But it's a campaign thing. Cool. And yeah, it's an app campaign story thing with dice and swords. I've heard there's stickers as well. Mm. There's like new rules and stuff. Is there? Yeah, that's true. Is it? Yeah, I looked at the little rule book. There's like stickers you put in the rule book. I missed the sticker section. I know. Well, it said, it was like, don't worry. We've put all the stickers in for you. Don't worry, there's stickers. Don't worry, there's stickers. Don't be afraid, there's stickers. That's uh, Fate Forge Sticker Warriors. Warriors. Sticker Warriors Chronicles too. of Stickers. Calm. I don't want to panic you, but we're in a castle panic, and, and it's a big box. Ah! <laughs> That's me panicking. That's a genuine panic. This is a big box. It's huge. It's so big that Tom has had to physically move mm -hmm. to one side just so we have room for him. I don't even know if we can fit the whole box. Don't in try. It. it will remove us from the video. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to look inside the box. Are we? In a bit later on when mm. we talk about why it's so big. Why is this so big? We'll but find out. First, we're just going to talk about what Castle Panic mm -hmm. regular box is. Yeah. And then we'll get into why it's so big. Yeah, cool. Well, we've got a little castle on the table here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I'm just going to focus on that temporarily because. It's a castle, and uh, don't panic. Well, I'm panicking now because those walls look slightly unstable. Yeah, well, I was going to say don't panic because the goblins are coming. There's so many goblins. They're in the forest. They're coming for our castle. They want to whack it. We sort of play the collective conscious of the castle, mm. trying to push away the goblin invaders. That's that was good. really good. Thank yeah, that was really good. I worried it was a bit. Mm. But thank you. No, no, I'll take it. So we're going to do six steps, Matt, on mm -hmm. every single one of our turns until we get rid of all of these monsters. The classic I will six point step out, castle program. I, I haven't set it up properly. Okay. I've no idea what these monsters That's are. That's fine. But it, normally they're just goblins and trolls and things. Yeah. Normally there's like a system, but we're just jumping in. Yeah. Which is vibing. It's just a demo. But there is a system for the six step process that we're going to go through on every single turn. The first thing we're going to do is going to draw up to six cards. I've done that for us. We've got six cards already. I like it. And then the next thing that you're going to do in your turn is you're going to maybe get rid of one of your cards and draw another one. Give yourself a little bit of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Why so much flexibility when you're drawing? Because you're now going to play those cards all in a row. Oh gosh. On your ones. Now, you'll see that these cards have lots of different, mostly what you've got in front of you are things like your archers and your swordsmans and all that kind of thing. These cards are going to do damage to Groblins, Orcs, Trolls, other enemies in that particular section of the board. You'll see the board is divided into sort of three biomes. Green, blue, red, the regular things that we all know and love. All the colours. And by playing certain cards, like a Green Swordsman, you could whack, do a point of damage to an Orc in the Green Swordsman zone. So what you're going to do is basically just play all of your cards to do as much damage as you want. But then why was all that, what was all that trading stuff about? Because mm. on other people's turns, you might give them a little card that they need to get rid of a certain thing at a certain time. I see. Which is kind of cool. Um, once you've done all your whacking, you smacked all your monsters, that's the end of your turn, and all the monsters move a little bit further in towards the castle. Mm. But the ultimate goal of when they reach the castle, that was, I thought that would be yeah. way more impressive than it was. When yeah, I was it didn't quite work. But, like, but they'll break it in the outer wall. But effectively, wall. they'll break down the walls. Yeah. And then they'll break the big tower. And then one of my favourite things is that when they're in the tower, they then go, <laughs> and they sort of rotate round, slowly chipping away at the they're, tower it's like, as it goes. Like they're, like, I don't know, termites eating the foundations yeah. of their building. <laughs> nom, 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 they're nom. munching away, and yeah. Then, and then it all collapses because it has no walls anymore. When they whack into stuff, they take damage, though. So they're like a termite that's sort of eaten too much, and then it just pops <laughs> after being in there for too what long. What a lovely image. Yeah, disgusting. So 
The base game is all very simple. You're just playing cards, whacking monsters, trying to get them to not destroy your castle. When you get through all the monsters, you win. At the end of your turn, by the way, you roll this dice, bam, and you spawn in more monsters uh -huh. over here or over here or wherever they spawn. Now, Matt, why is this dog dang box so big? Mm. It's because it's got four expansions in it. Right. Four of Castle Panic's deluxe expansions. Right. And I thought they would be small expansions. They're all huge. Wow. Let me just... See if I can get this on camera. I'm gonna just dump, dump this onto the table. I might just dump this straight onto the All table. Right, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna destroy the castle temporarily. Goodbye, castle. Oh. oh. <laughs> and there's also I really appreciate that they've got a little thing inside the inside of the box to show you how you're gonna arrange all of your castle panic. It, it's a Don't map. panic. It's a map for the expansion. It's so big <laughs> that you will get many. lost. So. This box contains four of Castle Panic's expansions. It's got the Wizard's Tower, it's got the Dark Titan, it's got Engines of War, and Crowns and Quests. I can't see the ones that are furthest away because of fog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful landscape of components. Yeah. Um, so the Wizard's Tower adds, I'm gonna try and do this all from memory, the Wizard's Tower adds a Wizard's Tower, which Good. if it gets destroyed means that you lose access to your deck of wizard spells that you can zap monsters with. Mm -hmm. This expansion also adds a bunch of monsters. Every expansion adds a bunch of new monsters that are going to do horrible things. Mm -hmm. The wizards also add fire. Yeah, I can so see you, fire. you can slowly, which is kind of like chip damage, it kind of burns away at your defenses. Then you've got the Dark Titan, which adds a bunch of new monsters, but it also adds a big boss monster who's somewhere in here. I don't know where. He's probably, this is like lots of jump scares. You could open this and be like, oh, got an engineer. there's more components. I can't help but notice the engineer. I just like the engineer, don't know why. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Flip over the engineer. And lady engineer. It's a lady engineer. Which is cool. Who knew it was that easy? <laughs> But yeah, the, the, the Dark Titan adds like these evil little boss monsters. Adds a boss monster who's got heralds who show up to sort of summon him. And then the Engines of War is what adds the engineer who can build things like siege towers and more defenses and like other kinds of things. And then if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough expansions, you have the quest system, which adds a bunch of like other little miniature expansions. If you want to chain games together with weird little modules, it's so much Castle Panic. And it seems to be a, quite a simple game for families. Yeah, like the core of it seems incredibly like breezy and simple, but there's also a lovely variant that kind of piqued my interest when mm. I uh, saw the rules where you play it completely co-op, but if you kill a monster, you claim it as a trophy. Right. Which is, you know, means that there's going to be a winner in a cooperative game. But I think the thing that's nice about that is that when you trade cards with another player, you were like, you're going to use that card to kill that big troll, aren't you? And you were like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and there might be kind of a bit of a negotiation element there, which I think right. is interesting. Or just, you know, letting them die. But that's not how co-op games are. No. So don't do that. Don't do it. Anyway, that's enough panicking for now. Yeah. Let's go and have a calm down. I hope the next game is really stressful. Yeah, it's going to be. Oh, boy. Thank you. Bye. Next up, we've got an absolutely gigantic beast of a game. This is Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood, a game that took me less time to learn than it did to simply put all of the things into the box in sort of the correct place. There are so many and things I in the box. still haven't finished. I oh, my I, goodness. I had to give up. Because, still? Yeah, it, it, I hadn't finished. <laughs> but there's some exciting stuff in here. There's a lot of objects. A lot of things. Yeah. So this is a game of two halves. Mm -hmm. It's a somewhat uh, unexpected merging of two games. Okay. Uh, in a way. Mm -hmm. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Right. Sort of. Yeah. A little bit. Looks like and, it. And um, Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> cool. Cool. But with a bit of kind of Monster Hunter, Kingdom Death Monster. There's yeah. a lot of different things mashing uh -huh, together uh -huh. here. But it's strictly speaking a game of two halves. Okay. You're going to play through a campaign. Right. With 12 different characters. Mm -hmm. Some of which are here. So you can see some of them here. Just chilling out on the on the campaign book of, of life. And this first half of the game, before I clear a bunch of the table and do something else, <laughs> is the kind of story part of right. the campaign. Okay. Where you're going to go around and basically make decisions as a group and find clues. Okay. Bit of a choose your own adventure yeah. with a bit of a detective element in it there? Well, it appears to be, yes. Okay. Like having a quick skim through the uh, early chapter, which it advises me not to, there's definitely the... You don't have time to find the informants. And no. Like, okay, something's going on with murder. Yeah. But it's all in a dark fantasy world. I see. So you've got this gigantic, this is one of two books, Oh my goodness. Which are the massive chapters you go through, uh, solving puzzles, uh -huh. doing mysteries, etc. And there's also a companion app, which I can't oh. show you because my phone is holding the map in place. Yeah. But effectively, if you don't want to read, you can have somebody read it out to you. That's and nice. then make decisions. And then the decisions you make throughout the story section are going to affect how the end of the campaign, that particular part of the campaign, finishes. Okay. And the fact that you might 
then have to fight a big bad boss mm -hmm. with a better situation or a worse situation. You might have like sticky hands or something. And when you're moving around this city, yeah, bump, 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 bump. Each time you're doing that, I mean, you probably won't use this, but you could use this person. Why not? Yeah, you're going to then put one of these tokens on this little board down here. And this little tracker here basically shows you how many uh, like slots of time you've used and if you managed to solve the mystery, I guess. The thing is, I haven't <laughs> wanted to read too much of this because I kind of want to check it out. Right. We haven't really played this, obviously. Um, then you get extra bonuses. So it's like how quickly can you resolve oh, the situation? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you've gone for too long, then you're not going to get as many bonuses. A ticking clock, a trickling sand timer. But then after you've done this mm -hmm. and you've had this whole situation and you've done all these things, you then have a fight. With a big monster? Yeah. Star, Star White. White. <sighs> Having now worked up quite a sweat, we've changed to the other half of the game, <laughs> which is then a massive kind of Kingdom Death style boss battler with a bunch of different bosses. We've got on the table now, first boss, it's a minor spoiler, but it is the one that's used as an example in the manual when teaching you the rules, so surprise, big rat. However, uh, these things as a part of the gigantic possible mystery select can you, you, you want me to get it get the mystery selection um but also much more to my preferences if i'm honest uh, you do have the option of just sticking with big cardboard standees which i actually think have a bit more character if i'm completely honest but horses for courses but there's two boxes of this there's you don't have to bring out the other one it's fine he's doing it there's two boxes of gigantic mystery boxes of gigantic bosses as bonuses there's a lot of like extra additional stuff with this one but I'm a big fan of cardboard, so we'll stick with that one for now. As you can see, these characters have got a face off against a big rat, and there'll be some other little minions here as well in the actual game. Mm -hmm. And the characters you're playing as. We've got a whole bunch of these other bags that I have not assembled because there's just so many of them. For all the different characters you can potentially play as, you're going to be leveling them up, you're going to be getting new skills, you're going to be basically having a character board in front of you that's going to be activating things by moving mana gems from one space to another to do movements and to activate your abilities. Right. You're going to roll some dice? You can roll some dice if you want. Big you, bag of you've dice. You've got the options. Can I do it? Yeah, go on. Roll, just roll a big bag of dice. Can you enjoy that? None of them fell off the table. I, I This one almost did, but I got it. Well, I got it. So these bosses are going to have health based on certain areas of their body. You're going to be able to, like, attack and damage different parts of them to make their attacks less effective uh -huh. and gradually eventually hopefully kill them and there's an interesting cycling system involving not bicycles uh, no. involving your actions no bromptons no um and how that works and there's a, the, a lot of the movement right i'll come mm -hmm. back to that saying a lot of the movement is based on like trying to draw straight lines around things and trying to use kind of line of sight and there's some interesting stuff in terms of like, you can stand here and have line of sight of the center of a gigantic enemy. Right. But they can't see you because it goes from their center, which kind of adds ah. a little bit of a peek around a corner. Peeking around a big tree just stump. Just catch the legs gotcha. of a big old rat. So we can see that taking actions and doing movements is going to spend uh, this animus power. It's just, you know, juice, whatever you want to call it, Lucas aid. And then gradually you're going to need to regenerate that and do some more stuff later. Cool thing though is you get these little mite cubes, which are the little coloured cubes, they slot into there and then you can use might, uh -huh. effectively, to make your chance of achieving something better. And that's what the dice and this little, these little racks of cards. I was wondering what for, these were right? for. Yeah. So interestingly, whenever an enemy attacks you, you'll see on the Broodmother boss sheet, obviously, we have uh, two reds and three yellow mites, which means that whenever it attacks, it's going to draw that many cards and those are going to be the damage that it's going to inflict, uh, right? Yeah, mm, or like, you know. Ah! However, we've got our own deck of hero might cards, which means effectively when you're doing things, you get to draw the better ones, with black being the best and then white being rubbish, but then you usually have to draw a certain number of them just to achieve it. I see. But you choose how many you're going to draw. So if I need to escape, get five to, to achieve an objective mm -hmm. in the map phase we saw earlier, or this, then I'll do that. But then you can use your might to add additional mm. better cards. And at any point, I if you see. want to, instead of drawing cards, you can choose to roll dice instead. These ones? Yeah. Can so I roll them again? Like, I don't want to draw a red card, I want to roll a red dice. Three! You've got a three. Would you have got a three on the red card? Uh... No. You would have got a two. So well done, Tom. <laughs> Interesting little rule, slightly strange, but hey, aren't we all? Matt, can I roll some more dice? You can roll more dice onto the table. These dice are not for rolling, usually. Um, but do it, do okay. it, please, please, please. 
What's going on here? All of these dice. Well, Tom, these dice are put on our boards to represent health. Ah. And they represent health for the big old Donsters as well, uh, going down slowly, pip by pip, as we take damage. Understood. And then we've got this north, northwest, southwest, south, southeast dice. Yeah, that's a movement dice. This map, basically, there's going to be sometimes enemies are going to move randomly, and you'll roll a dice to see what direction they're going to go in. You know what? Yeah. I've covered a very small amount of this entire gigantic box of things. Obviously, you've got items, events. Yeah, everything. you've got mysteries. Should we start with the oh, mysteries? There's mystery envelopes as well. Mystery envelopes are instead of the mystery boxes in many cases, I and see. that's how you get your standees rather than the big plastic, the big old plastic, which I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of. I yeah. like a standee. And then maybe the a keen-eyed view on this, we just have. A boxes. billion cards that are also here. We've got card box number three, card box number one, card box number two, and Mambo number five. That's Mambo crazy. number five, uh, the hidden, unlockable, forbidden Mambo. And characters? Do you want some of those? Sure. There's there's so many of them. There's just a lot going on here. There is a lot going on. This might be a slightly patchy sort of preview, but it's fine. I think that we're just catching a sort of a small glimpse of what this incredibly intimidating box has to mm. offer. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I need to lie down. Good luck. It's the 80s! Is it? I thought we did that already. And everything's great. Just like it is now. Mm. I was five when the 80s ended. Um, I was minus... I can't do maths. Okay. You weren't born. No. And I was born. And at that point, at the end of the 80s, I had a, uh, I had a BMX. It was blue and white. Oh. It was great. Great times. But when this was... isn't the real world, is it? No. Well, it's sort of a little, it's like kind of the real world, but a little bit spooky. I can't help but notice there's lots of giant walking robots. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like an alternate reality 80s. Although we are just in Sweden. Mm -hmm. You know, the game is just taking place in Sweden in the 80s. We're hanging out. I should say the name of the game. This is Tales from the Loop, the board game. Comes mm -hmm. to us from Free League Publishing. Who did the role-playing game of the same name? This is that, but as a board game. Mm -hmm. We're 80s kids. We've got to do kid stuff. And then we also got to go and do solving a mystery stuff. <laughs> There's a weird little mystery happening on the island and you want to solve it by finding clues, investigating rumours, maybe trying to hack some big robots to do your bidding. But also you've got to do chores. Yeah. You've got to get home in time for dinner. I, I, I really like the movement rules in this game because you've got to take the bus a lot of places. <laughs> I'm very enjoying sweet. the fact that just for reference, you have some different decks of cards over mm. here. And we have, for example, Anomalies is one Ooh. of the decks of cards, and then much, much larger than that, <laughs> chores, <laughs> which I feel is like quite representative of life. I do like that it's not, it doesn't seem like the sort of the, the, the be a child part of this game isn't like an afterthought. It's like quite central. Um, you know, you, you have to really role play as being you can't a kid. drive. Yeah, and you have to go and back for hockey to practice. Go home. Yeah, <laughs> Um, so generally, the way the game works within these sort of three steps, and before I should talk about any of this, I should say like, how do you win this game? What's mm -hmm. the goal? We don't know yet. There's a scenario, but you're going to kind of try and find out what the goal of the mystery is through the course of playing. You don't right. know your end goal. You're sort of just sleuthing around to try and work out what's what's going on at the moment. What what all this weird stuff is about. And we're going to play three phases over and over again until we manage to get to the end, or if the enigma value gets too high, which is mm. like the mystery gets out of control. Amped up our enigma. Mm. And some bad stuff happens. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to convene at school. Here we are. I've picked characters that are representative of us. You're uh, the you, jock. I'm the jock. I am you are the nerd. Yep, exactly. And would you care to show the people at home the special item that you get? Yeah, I am. Uh, for being... uh, I'm the, not the nerd, I'm the geek, the sorry. Geek. Um, and I've got my special item is a cereal cable. <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's not even a good cable. It's a terrible cable. It's very 80s. I suppose they were more useful back then. It really I mean, made me chuckle. I still have a few of them in the cupboard mm. because I expect that at some point I might need them. You could never get rid of them. But it's been about 15 years and I have not needed them. No, no. But you can bad. use this for interfacing with the computer. Yeah. And you can also use it to tow, make a toe with a bike. <laughs> which does make sense. They're yeah. pretty sturdy things. Yeah, I like that that's like the sort of the use case for it is like, yeah, the game knows that this cable is terrible as well. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, I remember for a video once, I we put a router around your neck, mm. like a necklace, yeah. simply by plugging the Ethernet port in and out. Yeah. Cables. Yeah. Yeah. It's fashion. Mm. Deal with it. it. <laughs> uh, so well, the first thing we're going to do is going to do the school phase where our characters reconvene at school and we look at the rumours for the day. We try and have a little think about what kind of rumours there rumors. might be. These are rumours and you can, can look, look them over. 
technically later on you'll be scouting the rumours yeah, to cheating. find out. I'm cheating. cheating. I want to look. We're not really playing the game. Um, so these will be things that you can go and do on the islands. So this will be in location L, which is here. You mm -hmm. could go here and you could do a little skill check with your little shaky hands icon. And if you passed it, you'd get the success. This is failure, there's, there's a bison failure. boar, which is like bison a, a creature of some sort Ooh. that we can go and snuffle around with. Very exciting. Make friends with. You want to be investigating these rumours, though, because if they slide off the end here, because we add new ones to the game, that will increase the Enigma track. So you've got to keep on top of all the rumours that are happening around town. Once you've had a bit of a school phase, we're then going to do sort of the main part of the game, which is the adventure phase, where you're going to take your little action-y cubes and you can spend time to do any of these different actions here. You've got some nice simple ones like walking between locations. You can scout to flip over location cards so you can find out what's going on before you go there. You could investigate, which is snooping around at a location where you take skill checks by rolling these fistfuls of dice. Mm -hmm. You'll notice your character has a skill they're good at, so you're clever, so you'll roll five dice for uh, things that need light bulb but matt i'm really sorry I'm also dull you are dull <laughs> so for wow <laughs> for tasks it's that... it's so realistic this game. <laughs> for tasks that re require friendship you will only roll two dice the standard is three dice so you're bad at, at, at friends i'm sorry i've been manually networking computers via ssh my wife does not want to talk to me <laughs> but damn i'm pretty smart right yes, now. yes it's, it's working it's working great matt just tell you just tell yourself can that. we just stop the camera so i can cry <laughs> Other options for things you can do on your turn include taking the bus, which means you can go between these little bus stop icons that you can see mm -hmm. on the board. You get the bus from like here all the way up to here if you wanted to. You can go from these bus stops to other bus stops. Or you can ask your parents for a lift. <laughs> You'll see you've got this little track at the top, which is called Favour, and you can only ask <laughs> mum and dad for a lift if you're on their good terms. And, and if you, you get spend the that by favor. going for back for family dinner. Exactly, yeah, you've nailed it. If, you go is... back, if you're back for dinner in time, it goes up. And also, you've got to make sure you do your chores by the end of the week. Say. Because guess what, Matt? If you get to the bottom of the favour track, your parents are grumpy, you're going to become grounded. And you're going to lock in two of your action cubes so you get fewer actions because you're stuck at home. I mean, this is really overstating the, the idea that when you have a meal together with your mm -hmm. family, that's a time where everyone bonds rather than <laughs> yeah. fights. <laughs> I mean, it heals everything. I want their families. What's going on? <laughs> You've got other options as well, like you can trade with people, you can try and hack the robots. There's a little mini game here where uh -huh. you have these little requirement tiles that will sort of get stacked on the robots as we go, um, which will sort of create a little challenge that you'll need to accomplish with your friends to try and make the robots into your friends. And once you've hacked a robot, you can catch a lift with them around the island. You can use them like a bus that can go anywhere. A parent that can never get angry with you and you don't have to have dinner with it. Exactly. That's why I love robots. <laughs> I also like the fact that you can ride the robot home for dinner. You can make up and be like, Mom and Dad, look what I found, which is uh, kind of sweet. Um, generally, though, you're going to be building. You've also got sort of special locations that you can go to to do their actions. But generally, you're trying to go through these diary cards, which are like mini objectives that you're mm -hmm. kind of trying to accomplish to ultimately find out what it is you need to do on the island. You'll grab items and anomalies along the way, and you'll have little things that happen at school that will sort of not only the school cards are like, they'll present a sort of skill check that's going to happen, but they also show how the robots move around the island. Right. Okay. And also the robots start off nice and docile, but they might become alert and more and more dangerous as right. the game goes Yeah, on. I can see. Yeah, so I might get nastier. So it's basically just a, a quite sweet, relaxed, um, cooperative game of mm. school children trying to solve a mild mystery whilst going to school. And it just happens that they're also gigantic robots walking around. Yeah, there. it's all the art in the universe is by Simon Stalinhag. Yeah. So it's that sort of like, the robots are kind of like built into sort of like the day-to-day. -day. The, the reason it's called Tales from the Loop is because this place is built uh, around a sort of science center that has this huge particle accelerator under the ground. Oh. And that's what's causing all the spooky stuff to happen. And the robots get out sometimes, I guess. and wander around the countryside and crush sheep or something. I made that up. He made that up. Yeah. Don't worry about it. All the sheep are fine. It's a family show. And that is Tales from the Loop, the board game. The board game. Wait, that's not it. We forgot that there's some expansions. This one adds a new robot and this one adds a dinosaur. Dinosaur. Those are the things, they are dinosaurs yeah. and a robot. It's, don't, these aren't, it says on the back, they're not complete games. They're not complete games. But I would say that if you did buy this, you could just have a lot of fun with a little tiny robot and a little tiny dinosaur. Don't eat the dinosaur. That's all we have time for. Welcome to another of these videos. Today we've got Horizon First Contact. Got a tickle in. Yeah, you did. You got, got a little tickle. tickle. Now, what are games but a, a box of ideas mm. that exist in the imagination of our mind? 
and unfold yeah, as such. That's really inspiring, man. Mm. And this in particular, because it's a prototype, is going to be that but more so than ever before in these <laughs> videos, potentially. In the fact that this is a game that has a lot of components which are not quite mm -hmm. there. It's going to have 3D buildings and stuff. As it is, it's quite flat and a little empty looking. So I'm going to try and explain to you the game around the edges of that. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, because I think there's some elements that aren't quite... Can you show me the building card? Yeah, I can show you the building I cards. worry that perhaps even as a prototype, some of the printed components might have come out slightly wrong. These are the, the cards that go on these slots here, <laughs> which I think is a mistake. So there might be elements of this which are flat yeah. out wrong in terms of sizing. Maybe if you got this game, it would be a lot smaller, or maybe it would be even bigger. We simply don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Caveats done. Horizon is a game of lots of different humans having traveled across space, had a bit of a like fallout, splitting off into all these different factions for thousands of years, and then suddenly having to come together again Ooh. and work together yeah. because there's great big gigantic monsters that are going to come and get, kill you all. And these are... Fleshy. The fleshy homunculus. The oh. homunculus things are sieging your big house. Yeah, just off camera, you can see the homunculus siege track, which is my maybe favourite description of a component in a game We ever. just physically weren't able to put all of this board on the camera or any of the cameras that we had lenses. But yes, we'll have a look at some of the homunculus art in a bit. You can see <laughs> the homunculuses that come into town to attack your base. Now, again, there'll be a building here. There isn't a building here now because it's a prototype game. Instead, we will place this singular cube in the center to represent our house. It, it's always invisible on the camera, but it it's is. a black cube on I a black space. I promise there's a cube there. Maybe it should be a rock. Put a little instead. gem on it. They are big, nice iron brew gems. They are absolutely fantastic iron brew gems. Delicious. So, on your turn, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be running through your team of people from your faction. Your crew. Your crew, exactly. Each of us are going to be playing as a different faction, and we've got a whole bunch of different kind of interesting spin-offs of what mm. humanity might like. I'm the and Mirage. The, we've got the guild over here that have kind of got like a really cool feathery vibe going on. They, they, they obviously decided as human, what if, if humans but cool birds? Whereas the Mirage is like, what if humans but... Uh, exclusively into showing people magic tricks in bars or something. I, I'm not Or also sure. being robots. Or also being robots. It's a it's a mixture of things going on. There's a lot of interesting character design in this. And I'll, I'll leave some of the decks in a moment for some brawl in the background. But effectively, you're going to choose a couple of these characters. You've got mm -hmm. five in a deck, and you're going to choose which one of them do you want to be your leader, which is going to slot onto a board as your little leader card, and you'll take a separate card for that character to put there. Right. And then you'll choose a couple of other characters that you want to have out in the field and maybe another character as a backup character in case gotcha. one of your characters <gasps> dies. How? Because of the big homunculus. Uh, I forgot about those guys. They are, they're there. They're, they're made big. of flesh. Now, homunculus, they're going to turn up. They're going to cause trouble. If they destroy your base and your house, then you've lost the game. But thankfully, we've all got different characters who are going to be moving around the world and doing things to try and stop these things. So, for example, the blue player would activate these two characters on their turn, and they can do a variety of different things. They mm -hmm. can move, Ooh. they can attack, ah. and they can basically do objective -y things. Right. And stuff like that. Fixing stuff up, trying to get through some Does that objectives. go on this little sideboard that you that have does. in your lap? I have a special sideboard that I've been keeping <laughs> hidden on my lap because it was just, there was no way to fit it on the table. And again, I don't know if this is how big it's actually supposed to be. <laughs> We're not sure. Um, in so the real one, it's this big. If you could just hold this for me, Tom. Yeah, no worries. This objective thing will go on here and you have these different objectives that are going to pop up. Again, the sizing of this makes me wonder if something's going on. But effectively, you have these problems that pop up. A curious illness, faulty ventilation, and a dangerous fanatic. These are all just describing Tom. So what you'll have to do is use some resources to try and fix these problems. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can get different rewards. There's two different ways that you can actually do that. For each of these things, you basically got options of like, for example, curious illness. Do you want to isolate the person? and try and cure them? Or do you want to experiment on them? Uh, that's it. That's it. That's the choice. That's the end. Is Make, it, and are these things that we'll sort of decide on together as a group? Or has one person got their authority I on, on this I think whoever one? basically does it, if you go and activate oh. it, then you get to choose. But you have to use different resources to do different things. And you can see here, there's a bit of a theme going through of the yellow, orange, and red. As you go through the game, the kind of threat level escalates. Ah, oh, right, and okay. the monsters get nastier, tasks get more difficult. And if you don't do these, then they would slide off the edge of that thing 
into the danger zone? No, they just dis oh. they just disappear. They just vanish. Else. Bump. <laughs> and then you get a problem on the back of it. Right. Out of control. The mysterious illness seems to be degenerating rapidly and the man cannot be controlled anymore. <sighs> oh dear. So basically, if you don't fix the problems, mm -hmm. something bad happens. They get real bad. And yeah, so you've got these like, all these different problems keep surfacing. Mm -hmm. And also, the, the core problem yeah. of gigantic fleshy creatures. The homunculus in the room, crunchy you well. The yeah. homunculus in the room. <laughs> don't worry though, because your characters have dice that they can roll. Whoa. Where are they, Matt? Well, the dice, again, they're not in this prototype version of the uh -huh. game as of yet, but I do have an app I'll show you in a second. Ooh. But you'll see on here that we can see this character would have a couple of red dice, and this character would have a couple of white dice. Mm -hmm. So, on the app. Bring us to the app. So obviously this is not an official app for the game, this is just to show us how the dice would work, and so you could play the game without the dice because they're not gotcha. available yet, and basically you would just like choose what dice you're rolling and roll them, and then you'll notice you'll get like resources from the bottom of them. So mm -hmm. basically it's like, you know, you roll these dice, and then you get some power and some things, and you'll use these to basically uh, pass tests. But also, if you go to certain locations on the board, like the refinery, then you'll be able to roll the dice and get some more resources. Right, right. Get some of these beautiful resources. Yeah. That you're going to be able to spend basically to top up stuff. So if you if you roll oh. your dice to try and beat a score, mm -hmm. then and you don't manage it, then it means you can spend some resources. Spend some big to top it up, or spend some resources to do some other stuff, and your characters level up, as you see on the board. Ooh. Also, not actually in this box yet is the monster dice, which you can see here on the wobbly phone. And basically, this will just roll a dice, which will show you which way the monsters are going to move. So they're always uh... just, just moving inwards, 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 inwards. Oh, inwards, so they inwards. move from the exit of the board slowly towards your little house in the yeah. middle. So they'll be like. Did you do voice work for the, for the yeah game, that's or? going to be in the game officially and obviously we've got a little d8 which we roll to see where the monsters appear you've got numbers uh, around the edge of the board and yeah you also use that to see how many resources you get when you make it on like refinery maybe they'll sit on your refinery or maybe they'll go to your other buildings and clog it up. oh i fell over and clog it up and make sure that you can't go there because there's a big flesh demon in the exactly way. when they turn up there if they turn up in an area with you in that character's going to take damage Oof. turn up in the building area if they get into the middle bit the middle bit's going to take damage, they're going to damage your buildings and stop you from using them. Basically, it's one of those things where it's just going to get more and more encroaching. You're going to have these characters. The characters are probably going to get killed. Yeah. And maybe you'll win the game by maybe. holding out and defeating the monculuses. Maybe you won't. I don't know. The monculuses. The monculuses. They're coming. <laughs> half homunculus. Half monkey. <laughs> monkey, monkey, come on, kill us. And that is a very early prototype of Horizon First Contact. You can check that out. It's going to be on Kickstarter, I think. Oh. So, yeah, uh, presumably then it will have, like, everything will be the right size. Yeah. And everything will be here. I did I did really enjoy the tiny, tiny equipment cards. Yeah, the, the equipment cards are so small. <laughs> I mean, maybe they get, I, I can only think in the game they're probably going to be, like, um, like, chip, like, Thicker, yeah. which makes them more like chits. Ah. But I do, there is something hilarious about having equipment. I, I want all games to have dicky yeah. equipment. <laughs> dicky equipment is my new favourite thing. <laughs> Just a tiny equipment for you. Put it on. It's a little hat or a backpack. That's uh, that's Horizon.